Welcome back, everybody, to the Weather Nerds YouTube channel. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman, and welcome back to a special edition of the Stormbreaker Report as we break down things uh, that are heating up out in the tropics, out in the Atlantic. And boy, is it uh, looking kind of busy. You know, I'm not tracking not one system, but one, two, three different potential systems here over the next week that could potentially develop into our first named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. And boy, if it's getting this busy this early, really has me concerned how things will be looking a little bit later in the season. So if you would like to get these critical information reports in your YouTube feed, please right now, very quick, very easy, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you learn on future content. And it really helps with the algorithm if you share this with other people and give me a thumbs up. Uh, those kind of things help the algorithm get this information out to more people. So it's very important if you can help me out, I would appreciate it. So we got plenty to get into for this edition. Let's go ahead first and take a look at the latest out in the tropics and look at that satellite imagery. So starting off by taking a look at the big picture across the entire Atlantic and still looking at some Sahara dust that's out in here. Uh, that's definitely inhibiting development out there. Uh, one decent wave looks like it's coming off the coast of Africa for the moment. But what's more concerning is what's closer to home. So let's go in and take a look at the closer satellite imagery here, looking at the Gulf of Mexico and off the East Coast. So we're gonna be watching the first area that we're concerned about is out here off the Atlantic. I'm not overly concerned about this because there's some decent wind shear over this zone, uh, strong upper level wind. So that one's not uh, too high on my area as far as development's concerned. The second one is just kind of coming into view right now. It's some clouds out of the Yucatan that'll kind of move into the Bay of Campeche in the Gulf of Mexico. Some very warm waters down this way. Uh, that one's looking more likely to see development there over the next seven days. And uh, so that's what the National Hurricane Center right now is tracking. So here are your two zones that we're talking about for potential development here as we head through the next seven days. Again, this upper level one's only talking about a 20% chance of development on that one. So that's pretty low. Again, we're fighting wind shear, but down here in the Bay of Campeche, different story. We're looking at a 40% chance of development. So very likely we at least get at minimum a tropical depression, maybe briefly a named storm, but I don't think this is gonna last very long. And the main reason is this is probably gonna likely move into Mexico and not become a problem. Then beyond that, there's another system that may come in behind this behind this area, and that will come in as we head and beyond the seven day that comes in right behind this in the Gulf of Mexico, which is showing up on the European model. And that one looks a little more threatening for the Northern Gulf Coast states. So we got plenty to talk about as far as the model's concerned. So let's go ahead and switch gears and take a look at the European. So we're going to first begin by looking at the, the main sea surface uh, pressure anomalies. This kind of shows us where the pressure is falling and where it's rising. In the blue, that's typically where you're getting low pressure form. You can see the yellows, that's kind of higher pressure. So uh, just for your references. So let's go ahead and take track this through. Again, we're watching that area off the east coast there between Florida and Georgia, kind of moving on off. And something they're trying to form, maybe a little pressure there off the Carolina coast, and then it kind of pulls away out in the middle of the Atlantic. So that is our first area to serve whether they're watching as we go into this upcoming Friday and Saturday and then pulling away from the eastern seaboard there. So this is not a huge threat. It may kick up the seas a little bit off the Carolina coast. Uh, but again, we could see a tropical depression, maybe a weak tropical storm form as this thing moves on out to sea. Then our attention will begin to shift down toward the Bay of Campeche. That's going to be down there in uh, off the Mexican coast there as we head into Monday and Tuesday next week. Notice the blue is really starting to darken up there as we see a little pressure forming down there as we could get our tropical storm or tropical depression to form down here. But also notice it is very close to the coastline, so it moves inland and moves into Mexico as we go into Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So this moves inland. Then on the wake of the heels of that, we get another area of low pressure that falls behind this. It forms out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico and then it tracks up into the north heading toward Texas and Louisiana as we go 10 days out heading toward June 22nd. Now, of course, this is long range out, but it has been showing up consistently on the American GFS model as well. And the fact that the European model now is catching on to that, uh, it shows me that this is something we need to watch closely as we go through the next seven to 10 days. Let's back this up and we'll take a look at this in a standard precipitation mode here again, as we watch the, that stuff out the Gulf, out into the Atlantic first, kind of pull away, you see the low there kind of forming and quickly pulls on out. So we don't have to worry about that system 
as it pulls away. That's the same system that dropped all that uh, severe flooding across Florida and it wasn't even a tropical storm or a tropical depression. It just shows you how juicy that air mass is. A tremendous amount of moisture out in the tropics right now because of those warm water temperatures. Then we watch out in the Bay of Campeche we watch this uh, system finally start to form a little bit and moves a lot of, of, of heavy rains into Mexico. So that's going to be a problem there along the coast there in Mexico. Maybe brushing extreme south Texas just a little bit but moves inland. And then we watch the behind that one there's that other system pulls up and then you see the moisture heading northward up toward Louisiana up toward Florida as well as we could see another system right there so again we've got a very busy situation out here in the tropics over the next seven to ten days it's pretty likelihood we're going to get at least one storm possibly two named storms and we're just in the middle of the month of June just to show how active this upcoming season potentially is going to be so once again, just the way current conditions are out in the tropics, we're gonna expect a very active uh, hurricane season. Obviously, we've got water temperatures out here across the Gulf and across the Atlantic running well above average. We have La Nina's return. That's that upwelling of cooler waters across the Eastern Pacific. So it means wind shear is gonna be pretty low or diminished across the tropical Atlantic. That's gonna allow these systems to develop uh, across the area. Now, as we take a look at the current ocean heat content uh, map, again, we're continuing to track uh, pretty close to last year's levels right through here. But again, that's more on par toward the, say the end of August, early September range uh, as we're approaching the peak of the hurricane season and not for the middle of June as we're looking at very warm wa ocean water content out there uh, for development. On top of that, as we've been tracking the tropical Atlantic, wind shear continues to diminish uh, quite rapidly. That's about on par where it's supposed to be for this time of year. Uh, but again, that wind shear is gonna diminish significantly and allow any kind of tropical activity to feed off those very warm waters out into the tropical Atlantic. So as far as the names are concerned, once again, we're talking about Alberto, Barrel, and Chris being the first three named systems. We got three areas of disturbed weather we're gonna be watching. Are we gonna get three named storms? Probably not likely, but it's possible we could get perhaps one or two as we track these systems here over the next seven to 10 days. So as you've seen with this report, we're only in the month of June and things are already getting very busy out into the tropical Atlantic and that will continue to increase in activity as we get deeper into this current hurricane season. So the mission of this report is to keep you and your family safe and informed with the most critical up-to-date information as possible. And you can help me get this out to more people. All I need you to do is do two things. Please subscribe to the channel, become a subscriber. And if you could please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Again, the purpose of this is to get it out to as many people as possible. And in the YouTube universe, you can have a lot of interaction. All right, that'll do it for now. You guys take it easy. We'll see you on the next update. Until then, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.